Last week, this site won awards as OTD, and as you know, I'm always on the lookout for SOTDs to bring you the coolest deconstructions and show you how to create similar web experiences. This particular site featured a stunning mouse move animation that seemed to defy some sort of physics and I realized there are not many videos out there that cover how to build this type of interactive animation. So I decided to explore it further. I managed to recreate this experience using P5.js and Matter.js. You are probably familiar with P5.js, it's quite popular already. Matter.js on the other hand is a javascript library for 2D rigid body physics, or at least that's what they call it. Though I'm also fairly new to these tools, they have really got good examples and documentation. In today's video, I'm excited to walk you through the code and show you how to bring such canvas animations to life using these powerful javascript libraries. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. Now let's dive into the code without any further delay. For this project, most of our work will be in javascript, however, we'll start with a bit of html to set up our base. We'll need a header for our page, so I'll go ahead and add that now. We'll kick things off by zeroing out margins and paddings for all elements and setting box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, I am setting both width and height to full viewport dimensions, setting overflow to hidden and setting background color to black. Next, I'll center the header, I'll set its position to absolute and push it right in the middle of the viewport, horizontally and vertically. For the h1 text, I'll add some generic styles like font family, font weight, font size, color, etc. We'll also prep some styles for the item divs that we'll add later with javascript. These will have absolute position, a bit of padding and a white background. Lastly, the images inside these items will fill their boxes, maintain their aspect ratio with object fit cover and I'll add a filter to make them look black and white. With our CSS in place, let's jump into the javascript. Before we dive into this, let me tell you again that this might be my first time using Matter.js but I'll try to walk you through the basics to give you an overall idea of what we are doing. First, we initialize Matter.js with a few lines of code. These lines allow us to use physics engine, add objects to our physics world and create various physical bodies. The engine manages the simulation dynamics and updates, world acts as a container for all physical objects, bodies are used to create various shapes with physical properties and the body instance provides methods to modify the properties of existing bodies. Next, we will define a variable that stores our physics engine instance. I'll also add an array to hold our interactive objects and two more variables to track the last known positions of the mouse. Next, I will define a function named setup. Inside this function, we'll initialize our interactive canvas and configure the physics engine. We start by creating a canvas that matches the size of the window, providing a vast space for our animations. Next, we initialize the Matter.js engine, which will handle all our physics simulations. I'll set the gravity in our world to zero because we want our objects to float freely without being pulled down. Then I add boundaries to our canvas. These are visible walls that keep all action visible by preventing objects from going out of the screen. Lastly, I'll populate our scene with 12 unique items. Each item is placed at the random position within a certain range to ensure they are spread out nicely. These items are not just random shapes, they are instances of an item class equipped with physical properties and linked to an image from our assets. With this setup, we are ready to dive into the dynamics of our environment. After that, I'll define that add boundaries function where we are setting up essential limits to our canvas to keep all action contained within the viewer screen. First, we define a thickness for our boundaries, which is set to 50 pixels. We then use the world.add function from Matter.js to add these boundaries into our physical world. Each boundary is created using bodies.rectangle, which allows us to specify the position and dimensions of each boundary wall. The first boundary is placed at the top of the canvas. It's positioned centrally along the width, but its vertical position is shifted up by half its thickness, making it sit just off the top edge of the canvas. Similarly, the second boundary is placed at the bottom. It's also centered, but this time it extends just beyond the visible bottom of the canvas. 
The third and fourth boundaries are vertical. One is positioned just off the left side of the canvas and the other just off the right side effectively framing our workspace. Each of these boundaries are marked as static, meaning they won't move under the physical forces. Next up, I'll add a draw function where we continuously update our canvas to animate the scene. First, we set the canvas background to black, then we update our physics engine, recalculating the movement and interactions of all objects. Finally, we loop through each item in our array, calling update function on each to adjust their positions and rotations based on the latest physics data. This loop keeps our animation smooth and responsive. Then, in the item class, we encapsulate the properties and behaviors for each object in our simulation. We define physical properties like friction air, restitution, density, and a random initial rotation angle. Then we create a rectangle using these properties and it's added to our physics world. Here, a div element is styled to correspond with item's physical location and rotation. It also houses an image element loaded with the specified image path. Then the update method continuously aligns the visual element which is our item with the physics body's position and rotation. It updates the div's style to reflect the item's current location and angle in the physics simulation. Using the mouse move function, we add interactiveness to our simulation that responds to mouse movement. This function is triggered whenever the mouse moves across the canvas. First, we check if the mouse has moved a significant distance, more than 10 pixels, from its last recorded position. If it has, we update last mouse positions to the current mouse coordinates. We then iterate through each item in our items array to see how close the mouse is to each item. If the mouse is within 150 pixels of an item, we apply a random force to that item. The magnitude of the force is set to 3. We apply this force in a random direction by generating random values for the x and y components of the force vector. Then, we use apply force function to push the item away from or towards the mouse position, depending on the direction of the calculated force. This function makes our canvas not just visually dynamic but also interactively responsive, allowing users to influence the movement of objects with their mouse. Hope you found this video helpful. See you in the next one.